growing up, there was an extreme case of like what I would call racial dysphoria. What you feel like inside doesn't match what's the outside, what you present as. I myself am a transracial adoptee, which means you are adopted by a family or set of parents outside of your actual race. Many Asian adoptees will look in the mirror and not feel Asian. I was always very down on myself, you know. I had a larger frame. My boobs were huge for, for an Asian. For an Asian, and I hate to even say that type of term because it shows that level of internalized racism. Like, what's an Asian body supposed to be like? And I struggled with that. It made finding clothes extremely difficult. They were uncomfortable. Again, like, especially after breastfeeding my son, they were even lower. Like, they were down to, like, my belly button. It was a struggle. And it was actually because of their large size that I didn't initially believe that the lump that I had was a thing. I'm like, why do I have, like, a chunk hanging out of the right side of my bras? They weren't closing on that side. I think I was still operating under the assumption that I'm Asian, this doesn't happen. We're supposed to be healthy. That's what I knew. I knew nothing about like what I was as an Asian human being. Opting for a bilateral mastectomy from the very beginning was a no-brainer for me. In the adoptee communities, it can be a very humiliating experience of going to doctors for our entire lives and saying when they ask for health history, none adopted. No availability of medical history doesn't mean health history doesn't exist. What's absolutely terrifying is when we have children, what are we passing on to them? We don't know. I had been in touch with my biological family in Korea for years. I hadn't really talked to them extensively, but the minute this happened, I texted them and I said, I need this information. Genetic testing was probably the most beautiful thing I've ever had done because I finally had insights. It's very strange to have waited forever for your health history to know this stuff, and then you find out not only was I operating under this false assumption that I'm Asian and hardy somehow, but, but when I do find out like my medical history, it is not good. It was a very complex situation because I had cancer, but I also had these bombshells being discovered at the same time. When I was talking to my doctor and his assistant, you know, that was the biggest thing is that he knew how bad my self-esteem was related to my, my breasts and his goal was to give me exactly what I wanted, so they were not anything like they were. The first thing I did when I was able to actually get out of the house was buy a strapless dress. I had never been able to wear that. My final piece of my breast reconstruction surgery, which is where the tissue expanders are swapped out for the implants, is scheduled for the beginning of the summer. I keep wanting to pick one of these opportunities to say like, then my, my journey is over <laughs> and then I'm done. But I still have hormonal therapy after that. I am not going to downplay that remission is fantastic, but I think what gets overshadowed is that now I feel like I'm constantly looking over my shoulder. 
I have always been somebody who wants to tell the truth because I feel like that's how you relate to people and that's how you can bring people in by being that person who's willing to, to talk about uncomfortable things because then other people don't feel so alone. And that's what I hope people get through. And I am so proud because like I've proven that that is not a bad way to be.